Good morning and welcome to worship. It's good to hear the band there playing a march for us. It says, uh, I'm going to fill, fill, fill the world with music. And it's good that within the Salvation Army, we're able to have that music as part of our worship. And I'm sure we thank the band for that this morning. Uh, after our service today, uh, for those that come regularly to hear, the coffee will be served upstairs in our new coffee facility in the back corner of the hall. It's all looking very smart. And uh, please join us for coffee after the meeting. For those of you who are interested in the Choir of Light, which is the choir that uh, sings uh, twice a year, the rehearsals for that start this Thursday at 8 o'clock. Uh, so please see me if you're interested and you haven't yet been involved, but I think a lot of you already know about it and are looking forward to starting the rehearsals this Thursday. And then our other activities are as normal, but just to mention also on Friday is our uh, messy church, which we have every uh, five or six weeks, and that's for the children, and that's at Friday after school at four o'clock on Friday. Then next weekend is the anniversary of our church here in Sunderland, Mount Weymouth. And on Saturday evening, with the visit of Lieutenant uh, Jill McCready, we have a cafe church in this hall at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock next Saturday evening is the start of our church anniversary weekend. And then if you've got the newsletter, just a reminder about the fundraising for the activity camp in the summer. Uh, there's boxes still at the back of the hall. You still have a chance to donate to that throughout the coming weeks. May the Lord bless you. Good morning. That was a bit miserable. How are we feeling? Are we good to be alive this morning? Yeah, so we'll try again. We can edit. Just for those who are maybe new today, this service is recorded uh, and is put on YouTube later on, hopefully later on today, so we can get the link to you if you need the link. So we'll try that again. We can edit this beginning bit out. Good morning. Good morning. How we're feeling? We're feeling good? Yes. It is amazing to see so many faces and it's lovely to have our Ukrainian friends joining with us today. For those of you who speak Ukrainian, I'm looking forward to listening. Could you put the first screen on for the first song? I'm looking forward to you singing in Ukrainian. For those who speak English, I'm looking forward to you singing in Ukrainian. So, it tells us in the Bible to make a joyful noise. It doesn't say about anything about being tuneful. So as each song, as each hymn goes through, you can either sing it in English, or you can sing it in Ukrainian. And if there's any spelling mistakes in Ukrainian, I can pass you on to the person who gave me the translations. But please feel free to sing however you want to sing, in whichever language you want to sing, because it, to God, it's a song of praise. And God understands all. The words in English are, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like he is praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. The band are playing an upbeat version of this. There'll be a few by his introduction, but if you look at the man in the middle, he's got a power stick, He'll let you know exactly when to start singing and when not to sing. So let's sing, stand and sing together, friends. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you. Please take your seats. We're going to continue our worship by singing another song, a more modern song, Light of the World, You Step Down Into Darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. It doesn't matter where we are in the world. What is going on around us? It doesn't matter. We can be in the most precarious situation in the world. But when we bow down to worship, what's around us doesn't matter. It's between you and God. So let's, let's sing this uh, song through this. Follow the screens. We're just in the, the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, the refrain, and we sing the chorus again. Thank you. Father God, we meet together this morning to, to worship you, to say that you are our God, to bring it personal, to say you are my God, that you came to earth to live, to die and to carry the weight of my wrongdoings, that I could be restored into that right relationship with you. And we are, we are happy to see our Ukrainian friends with us this morning. But we know, Father God, that as they come to worship you here, their minds will be to their home country. Their minds will be the, to their family and friends left behind. Their minds will be to that precarious situation with the war going on. And we pray, Father God, for an end to that war. We pray for health and we pray for strength and we pray for protection for their families and friends. We pray, Father God, that you would help us as a humanity to learn to live in peace. Help us to become the peacemakers. 
to become blessed people by bringing about a world of peace. Father God, we also think of other areas in this world in which we live, where there is conflict and strife. Our hearts also go across to, the, to Gaza and the dreadful situation there. And we pray, Father God, that in this world, it could really know and taste and experience peace. So help us as your children, to be bold in our prayer, to be bold in our actions, and to be the peacemakers. We ask all this through that wonderful, powerful name of your dear Son, Jesus, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. For those who are feeling young at heart, I came across something when I was... Uh, out and about. Have you ever seen posters put on lampposts and stuff like that? Yeah? You ever seen posters on lampposts? And this one caught my eye. It said, reward, a thousand pound. Anyone like a thousand pound? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We all catch that headline. A, a reward, a thousand pound for a lost dog. There's a lost dog and they're offering a thousand pound. Now this dog has got a description. It's a black and tan dog of poodle and German shepherd descent. It says the dog's description is flea-bitten, missing a left hind leg, no hair on the rump, going slightly blind, too old for tricks, might bite if it's cornered, and answers to the name of Lucky. Lucky. When I look at that, I'm chuckling to myself. How can this dog be called Lucky? When it's flea bitten, missing the right hind leg, no hair on its rum, going blind, too old for tricks, might bite if it's constant. How can it be called Lucky? It can be called Lucky because its owners value it as part of the family so much they're willing to put a thousand pounds up. A thousand pounds, a lot of money. That dog is so important to that family, even if it's flea bitten, missing the left hind leg, no hair in the room, going blind, too old, and might bite if it's scared. But it's part of the family. You know, Jesus came to this world that anybody can be part of his family. No matter what we look like, no matter where we come from, no matter if we look a bit mangy or flea-bitten. I hope there's no flea-bitten people here today. Some things are not good to share. But it doesn't matter what we look like, where we come from. Jesus paid more than a thousand pound to find us that we can be included in his family. He paid the ultimate price of his life. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So next time you see a poster on a lamppost saying reward, just think of the price that Jesus paid for you guys, for your families back home, for everyone who calls on his name will be saved. Now, I've got a song which is a little bit different it involves actions. Does anybody like doing keep fit? Yeah? Yeah? Now this, this song involves really, this is really good for our Ukrainian friends to teach you how to multitask because you've got to sing in English and do actions in English. And the kids are really good at doing this. So it's, I'm great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill, to have a friend like Jesus. Not perfect grammar, I'm apologising for that. So the actions are great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill. To have a friend in Jesus. It's great, 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 work along with me, see if you can do it. Great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill. To have a friend like him. He's always there, he always hears me, he always hears me, he talks to me. Am I getting it wrong now, aren't I? 
Yeah, I'm getting it wrong. I'm a man, I cannot do everything right. Most things. But the actions, but the trouble is, it doesn't go like that. It goes, it goes like that. So it goes really fast. So whoever gets the action spot on, you can be first in the coffee queue at the end of the service. <laughs> if you don't get the actions right, right, you're at the end of the queue. And whatever you do, please don't hit the person next to you. Because that's not going to be nice. So I invite you to stand. Try to do the actions with me. Hopefully I'll get it all right. And the music will play. coming to church isn't good for your health. It certainly gets the cardiovascular going and it's, uh, it's, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. We're going to be blessed now as we uh, restore some sanity and listen to the message from the band. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning. We're just going to have our scripture reading just now, and Elena's going to come and help me. Um, she'll do the Ukrainian side, and I will do the English side. Yes? Okay. The reading is taken from Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, no, go back. Коли Ісус побачив натовп, то зійшов на гору, сівши на землю, він почав навчати людей, та учні теж оточили його. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Благословені в Богі духом, бо царство Боже належить їм. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Благословені засмучені, бо Бог утішить їх. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Благословені смиренні, бо вони успадкують землю, обіцяно Господом. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Благословені голодні та спраглі до праведності, бо Бог задовольнить їхню потребу. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Благословені милосердні, Бо вони зазнають милосердя від Бога. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Благословені чисті серцем, бо вони побачать Бога. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Благословені миротворці, бо вони будуть названі дітьми Божими. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Благословені переслідувані за праведність, бо їм належить Царство Небесне. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Благословені ви, коли вас скривджують і переслідують, і облудно зводять наклипи на вас, тому що ви мої послідовники. Радійте і веселіться, бо на вас чекає велика нагорода на небесах. Так люди переслідували і всіх пророків, які жили до вас. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Thank you to Major Elizabeth and Elena for sharing in that scripture reading. Our next song was inspired, well, written by missionaries who served in the Ukraine. And the story goes that they were caught in a fierce thunderstorm and took shelter uh, while this storm was going on. And Psalm 8 came to mind. Um, but also the second verse of this song was directly inspired by that caught in that thunderstorm, taking shelter under trees and then hearing birds singing in the trees. So we have a lot to thank the Ukraine for, given us inspiration and probably one of the greatest hymns, one of the greatest songs that is in the Christian church. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand has made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art. Let's stand, we'll take the lead from the band and we'll sing the song all the way through. Thank you.
please, please take your seats. Music is a very important aspect of worship within the Salvation Army and we're going to be blessed now as these songsters, our own choir, will bring to us their message. Now if any of our Ukrainian friends like to sing, there is the opportunity to join our choir for the next five Thursday nights and then perform at a concert in five weeks' time. If you want to know more, come and speak to me after the service. But let's listen to our songsters now. Thank you.
Thank you very much to Jill and the Songsters for that. And if, uh, if any of you uh, fancy yourselves as budding singers, as I said, this Thursday, our choir rehearsal start, and it's open to anybody. Whether you can sing like the Songsters or whether you can't sing and just stand there to make the numbers up like myself. Uh, it's open to anyone, but if you want to know more, please let me know after the, after the service. Today across the Ukraine and across most of the Orthodox, well, the Orthodox Church, they're celebrating Easter. We celebrated Easter uh, in the West a few weeks ago because we follow a different calendar. And I was challenged with today, I, I felt we needed, as a church, to do something. And I felt that today was an important day for us both to celebrate our faith but also to remember our friends and our families in, in the Ukraine. And when in preparation for this, the Beatitudes came to mind, probably that Jesus' greatest sermon that he ever preached. And Jesus was saying that you're blessed when you experience difficulty and trouble. That no matter what happens, nothing can rob you of your faith and your relationship with God. No one here in this room can even come close to understanding how you, our Ukrainian friends, are feeling. But know that you are loved, that you're regularly prayed for. And as Jesus said, you're blessed. Why? Because God loved you. Matthew sets the scene by saying that when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to a mountainside, he sat down. Then his disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Who are these people? People who don't recognize their own spiritual poverty. When you think about this world, its values, money, possessions, power. Yet what are these in the great scheme of things? When at the end of our lives we stand before the Almighty and our life is judged, these are just things, just stuff. This stuff gets in the way of our relationship with God. These things aren't really that important. Because blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus begins and ends in talking about the kingdom of heaven. When you recognize it, that your spiritual poverty, you can't just stay there. Rather, it becomes a launch pad for abundant blessings from God. The start of a journey towards salvation. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. When we recognize our spiritual condition, it brings us to mourn. Have you ever known somebody who was deep in sin and knew about it, but didn't care? Knew they were doing wrong, but didn't bo wasn't bothered about them, didn't care? Or someone who is honest about their spiritual poverty, but also is not moved to sorrow and repentance? These people cannot know God's grace. You cannot see yourself as a sinner. You cannot look at Jesus and his suffering on a cross for our sins and not be moved to mourn. When you mourn because of your sin, it tells us we are comforted, we are blessed, we are forgiven, we are restored, and our journey towards salvation continues. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the, the earth. The word meek in English, is translated as gentle. Some think as meek, as submissive, and humble. Just follow Jesus' thinking on this first moment. A person sees his spiritual poverty. He grieves over it. It becomes in the meekness before God, willing to submit to God's way and God's will for his life. Jesus says, God will give the whole world to people like that. All through the Bible, God sees the proud, the strong, and the arrogant, the self-absorbs, 
and takes their stuff from them and gives it to the meek, the ones who love him. God humbles the proud and lifts up the humble. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now this developmental plan, this, this plan, this journey to salvation continues. The meek person who comes to God in deep submission develops a spiritual hunger, a thirst for what is right in God's sight. Thirst for righteousness. Jesus says they will be filled. Have you noticed that nothing in this world can truly satisfy you? I'm not sure if our Ukrainian friends would agree, but it's like eating a McDonald's. You go to, you go to McDonald's or other fast food restaurants, I need to say. You have a meal. Half an hour later, you're hungry again. Is that the same in the Ukraine? Yeah. Our, our fast food place, you go and have a meal, you sit down there, half an hour later, you're hungry. Because it doesn't satisfy you. It doesn't fill you. It leaves you hungry quickly again. The world is full of promises about stuff. And it just doesn't satisfy you. You'll never be truly satisfied or happy or full of this world's stuff. Blessed are the merciful. What do they get? Mercy. This continual development, this journey towards salvation continues. People who, who want what is right so badly that they can taste it also need to have balance in their attitude. Don't love what is right so much that you fail to have mercy on people around you. People who can't get, the, get it right and do things wrong. You need to have mercy. It is right and correct to be merciful too. In fact, if you want mercy, show it to others. Giving it away is the only way to get it. Are you thankful for merciful people in your, in your life? Imagine a world missing of mercy. Mercy is a vital ingredient in any relationship. Can you imagine living with me where there's no mercy? Imagine living with me where there's no mercy in our relationship. I don't think I'd be alive or stood here. But imagine living... We can edit this bit out as well. Can you imagine a life without mercy? A marriage where mercy is missing. Imagine being in a church where there's no mercy shown between its members. Imagine a society without mercy. If you want to see a society without mercy, you need to return to an earlier age of the Roman Empire, an empire of self, of greed, of power, that was totally absent of mercy. Once the mightiest empire in the world conquered every nation before it. And now it's a footnote in history. Granted, we can see the relics of what was. We can go north and see Hadrian's Wall. You can go to Rome and see great constructions of what was. But because they didn't have mercy, they're a footnote in history. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. As this development goes on, a person shows mercy, they become pure in heart. Pure means clean, innocent, and sincere. Jesus shows us that our vision of God is the only clear way when we have a pure heart. You cannot see God and be a phony. You cannot come before God and have wrong motives in your heart. You come before God with pure heart. It is the only way to get the blessings of God. You have to recognize you're in spiritual poverty. Grieve over your sins, meekly submit to God, develop that taste of righteousness, become merciful. Then God cleanses the hearts and shows himself to them. And when you see God, you get that peace. 
more than that, it's time for you to help others to find it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. This is perhaps what the world needs more than ever before. Peacemakers. Jesus didn't say peace lover, but peacemaker, and there's a difference. Some people don't love peace, they just don't like conflict. They do anything to avoid conflict. But peacemakers can't but help share the peace of God with others. They enter conflict situations. They enter the darkness of sin and peacemakers bring into the light of God, into the lives of people. Peacemakers work to build God's peace and help to end conflicts. But there's a cost to being a peacemaker. Blessed are those who are being persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's no doubt that throughout history people are being persecuted for their faith. In Roman times, Christians were sent to the arena, fed to the lions, executed, used for sport. Throughout history we read of martyrs who lost their life for their faith. Even today, in some places, Christianity is being persecuted. But the wonderful promise from God is that theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This road map to salvation now becomes even more personal and speaks directly to the believer, especially as the believer has faced a very difficult journey. There's a shift from blessed are to blessed are you. Blessed are you when the reviler persecute you, the say all kinds of evil against you, fault falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. As we have journeyed through this road map to salvation, we've become to a place of spiritual maturity. A person who is like Jesus will endure suffering for the kingdom. We are told that in our suffering, which seems to make a contradiction in terms, if we think our earthly existence is it. But it isn't. This existence that we have now isn't it. There is an eternal destination for all of us, depending on what our relationship is like with Christ. Eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. We're told at Philippians 2.10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Think of the richest, the most powerful man or woman in the world. At the name of Jesus, every knee, their knees will bow in judgment to God. In the 1930s, the world was a very different place. The Russian Revolution had happened. One of their sen senior communist leaders, Nikolai Bukharin, journeyed from Moscow to Kiev. His mission was to address a huge assemble of local people, and his topic was the value of atheism. <coughs> For a whole hour, he bombarded Christianity. He hurled every verbal weapon at his, at his arsenal to, to ridicule and destroy Christianity. Everything that he knew. After the hour was over, he thought that Christianity in Kiev, in the Ukraine, was in smouldering ashes, destroyed forever in this glorious communist Russia. He asked, does anyone have a question? Solitary old man. Rose asked permission to speak. Come. Come to the platform. Come. Come and speak. Support 
our glorious communist revolution. Let us know what you think. The old man struggled to the platform. He came, stood and looked across at the multitude gathering, the very smug Russian communists behind him. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. Then he said, Christos vos cres. Christ is risen. And the whole assembly, perfectly in Ukrainian, said, He is risen again, indeed. In the mighty Roman Empire, Christ was risen. In the communist Soviet Russia, Christ was risen. In Ukraine today, we pray that Christ is risen. In our country, in our world, we pray that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Our journey towards salvation, we learn that we are a blessed people, even in difficulty, because nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not death or life, angels or demons, not the fears that we have or the worries we have about tomorrow, not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. If you don't believe me, that's written in Romans 8.32. Nothing can separate us from God's love because, because of God's love we are a blessed people because He has risen. He has risen indeed. Today is important because it's an opportunity for us to share our solidarity, to share in prayers. You can see over there or on the holiness table, there's prayer cards. Every prayer card is different. I would invite you in a moment, there's going to be some music playing, to come forward and perhaps take a prayer card and pray for the, the situation, for the people on that prayer card. When I was putting these together, I was moved to tears looking at some of these situations. Location unknown. Praying for the family of somebody who's been deceased. Praying for family members. Praying for locations which are becoming more and more understanding as we look at the news and we see where these cities are. I would ask that you would come and take a card and pray. The, the, the cards are in Ukrainian and English. But also you might want to come and light a candle. Come and light a candle remembering a loved one. Remembering a situation. And just in solidarity you're saying that he is risen. That you're not worried or anxious or anything because you're putting your trust in God. There's going to be music played, a video is going to show. The, the music is the music of still, but it's all sung beautifully in Ukrainian. And I would ask that as the music plays, perhaps you might want to take a card and kneel and pray before you take it home. You might just want to come and light a candle. You might want to sit quietly where you are and do it afterwards. However you feel is appropriate. I pray that you act and respond to the Spirit's leading. So let's respond as we, we feel led. Thank you.
штор і грім гримить, до тебе виздуша моя летить, отже мій цар на всій землі, я не боюсь зі мною. For cities in Ukraine, for situations that perhaps some of us cannot even begin to imagine, but you know all. We pray, Father God, that somehow that peace would, would happen, that peace would break through the violence of war, that restoration and rebuilding could happen in that amazing country. Their families could be reunited, children to see parents again, grandparents again. And we pray, Father God, that you be very close to every member of the Ukrainian family that's been dispersed from their homeland, whether in this country or other countries across Europe. Just be with them and help them with the practicalities of life. But also just be very close to them and support them spiritually as well. We think of the amazing mums who are being mum and dad to the children because husbands and fathers are still in the Ukraine. We pray that you will give them the strength and the patience to be both mum and dad. We pray for the children who are become single parents, families, because only half the parents are here. And we just pray that they would understand and they would be proud of their families. But Lord, we pray above all else for peace, a lasting peace, for countries to agree to disagree, but to live in peace for an end to war. 
and return to the way that you wanted us and instructed us to live our lives. So, Father God, in your amazing way, hear and take our prayers as an offering of faith and answer them according to your will and way. This we ask in your dear Son's name and in the powerful name of your Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Friends, we're going to conclude with a more modern song, a more modern hymn, but a great hymn of praise that simply sums up our lives. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. I stand. I invite you to stand as we sing together. Thank you.
final benediction before we enjoy some refreshments together. May the Lord himself bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord himself make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord himself lift up his counts upon thee and give thee peace now and forevermore. And we unite to say, Amen and Amen.